21 of my 3D tutorial series. If you join me part way of this tutorial series, please refer to my website www.andrewbooth3d.com. I say this every time I start every um, tutorial. I do it for good housekeeping so you can always locate all my previous tutorials so you can see what we've done and my basic uh, information you know my contact so if you want to contact me for critiquing assets or if you require a 3d artist just email me at, at a.booth3d at, at outlook.com or you can follow me on twitter at andrewbooth3d or my previous tutorials is located in the tutorials tab like so and you can click here for more I'll be doing at the bottom I'll be having a number system so this is page one page two will be the next page and then page three will be like 21 to 30 and then page four will be 30 to 40 so on so forth now last time we discussed uh, how to import the salt and got the pepper grinder into the uh, Unreal Engine. The reason I call it salt is because in the later later on I will change the substance graphs so it can enable a boolean value where you can turn it to pepper or salt. I'm, uh, I'm working out how to do that. If we open the blueprint we, we were discussing the blueprints. I start this off. I've been working out why this hasn't been working. It's because of the actual occlusion. The, um, if you actually go to the viewport, although the original SatMess has, uh, you know, what do you call it? A collision. It has a a collision attached to it it this actual model doesn't actually have it in the blueprint so for something like this it's always good to have a capsule one because it's a spherical and then you edit that the actual um, capsule I do apologise, my mouse is playing up a bit. <laughs> so make this 50, 100, 90, 80, and make this 4. There you are. And down here, change it so it's. Da, da, da. It's not a stat mesh occlusion overlap or dilemmic. So. Basically, what it's saying it's uh, like a overlap, so you can overlap. So when the character overlaps it, it will do something. So begin a on component overlap. So we can say cast to third person. character and as the character destroy the destroy cell that may work if not I may have to plug that in there you go see 
That was what was wrong with it. But if you actually, if you go into that, as you can see, it just disappeared. It's no, it looked too unrealistic because it was too sudden. So add delay. You add a delay. Point two seconds, and it's a bit unrealistic to be honest. It just disappearing like that. You're just destroying it. So, with this, I would do um, play particle. Born emitter at location. And then explosion. Here I get get location. Let's see if I can get at Sometimes it, it can't get like that, so you have to get do it this way, get. Location, get at to location. And then get a reference. So basically I'm saying, okay, get a third person character, you delay, delay it. And then as it overlaps, the third person overlaps it, it spawns an explosion and then it destroys that. But you need sound. So play sound at location. You click the sound that you want. So explosion. Then feed the location like that. Now, as I'm a bit fussy with um, wires overlapping like that, I add a uh, reroutes re node and just drag it down. Like so, and there you go, it makes it a little bit more tidy, neat and tidy, so anyone can read it and know what's going on. So, basically, what I'm saying, I'm casting. So, what I'm saying, what I'm saying here is when you cast to the first player, casting means that it allows the this blueprint to see another actor or another class. So, for example, we're saying, okay, if this, if this um, character, third person character, which is located in the blueprints, this third person character overlaps. If the third person overlaps this, 
set a delay, and then spawn an emitter. You spawn, you spawn an emitter, you know, a particle effect at location, at the location of itself, of the pepper grinder. Then it's playing a sound at the location and then destroying it. So now, when I walk up to it, there you go, it destroys it completely. There you go. So it's a basically you turn a pepper grinder into a bomb. Simple as that. So now what we could do we can then destroy his health. We set up a health a health system. Now this health system is run by the um, by this actual game mode. You see there's many different classes in Unreal Engine 4. You have the actor which this is class. This is class as an actor. This is class as an actor. As you can see, it's classed as an actor. Where this is classed as a pawn. A pawn is an actor that be, can be processed. But you have a third person game mode. You have the game mode. In here, it's a data only blueprint. But you can open up full in the editor. and this is the blueprint. So this is the wheels and everything like that. It's the wheels and everything about that. So at the front, at, um, on here, this is where we're going to be doing all the taking away and the health and such like that. So we'll be saying to the game mode controller, this is the game mode. Basically it's the controller. So you're setting the rules and everything like that. So in here we'll be doing the functions of the health and everything like this. And in here we'll be working out the calculations and to do the health system. So first of all, I mean, first thing I will say is you can do blueprints and execute the blueprints in any blueprint system of its level. For example, if you're doing something with a, an actor, going over to another actor, you can do it in any of those two actors. But it cannot do it to the level above, like the, you know, level pr blueprint. It won't see the parent. The parent can't see the child, if that makes sense. It works off that hierarchy. So add, uh, as you can see, it has no overlap ability at all. This one, so what we do here, we set up the help here. So add function, call this add help. Oh, actually do take help. A lot of this is about data management where you want things to be placed and what not. Where you want to store the information and where you want to get the information. So as take hell, we want to input data. 
and since float is 0 to 1 where integer is one a whole number it makes sense to do integer call this health actually no I'm going to change it because we, if we're doing a health bar it makes sense to do it as a float because a health bar is a, is a slider is a progress bar which comes out in the value to 0 to 1 so it makes sense to do it as a float so you get the health then add a variable call this actually no I was going to do it so it will be preset so every time I call this a function because that's what you do you call out functions but if I was going to do that uh, it will always be the same value a month every single asset I do so and that's not always a good thing because if you have different assets that do different amount of damage or different amount of score you need to be able to input that individually so add another health one So this one will be damage. There you go, damage. And add new output and call this health. New health new health now you're probably thinking why am I doing this well this is where we're going to do some of the calculations from here we're going to take the health and we're going to take away by the float so we say hey this damage here will be taken away with this health will be taken away by this damage now it may be that I'll get these the wrong way around if that's the case what we can do is go to these and just change it around you know there's arrows here so we can change the order like so So basically what we're doing, we're taking the health and we're taken away by the damage. So now this will be the value of these two, the, the sum of these two take, being taken away. So like that, we then set it, set set health or or in this case promote failable we name this as new health new health so basically we're saying
basically what we're doing, we're taking the health away from the damage to get the health, new health, and that will be the return. And that's the root of the calculations done. So then when we go into here, we now do the score in here. Now, we don't always have to do it by casting it to like that. In fact, what we could do, so first of all, what we need to do, we need to get the, that value in the game. So we need to do another cast. So add a fence. And the thing begin to play. So as soon as we start to play, we're casting cast to third person game mode. Now you probably ask me, you probably think, why are we casting it down here? Well, what we are essentially doing by casting it here, a sense what we're doing. Actually, I just had four. It makes more sense to have it as the character at, at the location because it's the one that's touching the, the actual pawn, these dispensers. So it's just easier to click that in. So we're getting the actual location of the character and it'll attach it to the character, but it doesn't matter because it's what's touching it, so it'll be on the location anyway. Now this being I cast to the third person game mode, it's now I have the ability to get all of the actual data. So here I can add another variable. Call this health. Call this health. This is gonna be Float, compile, and since health always starts at one, we can then use that. Get. Get at uh, get actor So now we're casting it, 
because we're casting it, we now got access to Hmm. I gotta think now. Wait a minute. What if I test this child? Hmm, I gotta think now. Uh da da da. This is what you gotta do when you deal with blueprints or anything with when it's coding because you gotta think how am I gonna get that information? Because at the moment it's saved in the game mode. The function is actually in the game mode. Unless I come off of here. That's right. So cast to game third person game mode this is another trick I always learn you can always pull off from the from an assistant line and clicking and dragging it there so now what I can do is add another reroute road and making it tidy and pull the line down to underneath the rest like so there you go and it's made it a little bit more tidy it's not overlapping it's tidy so, as a third person, get, take, take health, there you go. Now we've got access to the function. And as you can see, we're going to set the health. And we're going to um, get the health, the reference of the health, hook it up into health, and a damage. So add another variable damage, compile that, and have it as 0.2. So basically, now what we do when the actor is destroyed if we're casting to the game mode and getting the take health function so we're getting that stored information that calculation and then we and then taking the damage away from the health that leaves the new health which then we are setting as a new file back to the health so we're saying okay this health will be taken away by the damage then it's been re and, it, and it's being stored back into the health to make sure this is working we're going to print print screen what this does we, it's getting the value of the float and then print it to the screen for debunking. So now when we press play, it's it's doing the calculations, but for some reason it's not print screen in it for some odd reason. Perhaps it's because I need to add it here. What if I do this here? Print. 
string. right now that's odd normally it does normally it does work for some reason it's not but, but it's something we can look at tomorrow I think I'll leave it here because there's a lot of information we covered just as as an overview I'm well, I'm gonna, as an overview I'm going to show you what we've done so basically, basically what we've done, we got the, we got the um, overlap. So when it's overlap, we cast them to the player, and then we, and we delay it, and we again the, as a third person character, and then we get the location of the actor. And playing a particle effect, and then using the same location, playing the sound at location, and then destroying the actor. And then we're doing about this calculation. Next time we'll be talking about UNG, you know, use interfaces, how to add the scores to the. Um, to the actual screen here and then we'll be talking introduction to the actual substance graph and how to use that now one thing I didn't show you is this instance graph this here is all the exposed parameters you know there's the the roughness control so if I zoom in to one here and go to instance graph I can make change the information and it will it'll render it in real time so I can turn it to one and it will completely make it matte As you can see, it looks not a it looks like a word, but it's not varnished. Where if we put it about, if I put it here, as you can see, it's turned it back to varnish. Where you can take away the dirt layer, and you can see it's. It's taken away the age and dirt look. We can turn it back up. And as it renders, it changes it. And then we can change the actual steer control, just like before. And look, we get a different instance of, you know, a different variation of the texture. Same for the dirt. Not much will change in there, and so on and so forth. This is the actual, all the exposed parameters we exposed in some sort of design. Now these names we got here are the label names, but when you over, put your mouse over it, and when it says salt roughness, that is actually the identifier. So then when we go into the blueprint, like here or in the level blueprint, we can then call that identifier out, these identifiers out, so we can then change these values using blueprints. That'll be something we'll be looking at um, in the near future. So I want to say thank you for watching me, and I hope you have learned a lot today. And please do follow my artwork. Thank you for watching.